Hello everyone and welcome back to Loco Shortline Operations where today we're going to be covering black gold. Texas tea. That's right. Any name you give it, we're going to be covering oil in this tutorial. And oil is a bit like coal in one way in that it's completely different to how the other industries operate. And the main thing about oil is you don't make any money off it. So you may be wondering why we would want to bother with oil. Well, let me run the intro and I'll tell you why. So here we are on the Merchford Valley Railroad. Shameless plug there for my own app with my own custom cars in the game. Now that may be possible in the future that everyone can have custom cars, but at the moment, Joe the developer, in thanks for me making videos a long, long time ago, just thought, you know. Give me my own little wagons to use, but anyway, the reason we are here on the Merchford Valley Railroad and we're not doing this video on the tutorial map that I've been using previously is because oil takes quite a while to set up. And let's zoom out so we can see. First of all, what you need to do is you need to find a pipe sticking out the ground like this. And it'll have four white sticks around it, like so. And don't worry, you can see them from quite far off. Um, if you're on map two, I'll give you a clue. That purple diamond in the sky there is Winston Bay. There is another one hidden on the map over roughly in that direction, but this is my main one. And first, thing you're going to want to do if you're getting into the oil industry is you're going to want to press the question mark on your keyboard and that brings up the build menu and you can go through so we've got prop object which will also be on your g key i believe is all of these ones we have snap object so this is your n key so buffers crossing point re-railer all the good stuff points again that same thing the snap object really i don't know why we've got boots for that but i suppose if you want to get to the points quicker without scrolling you can and the fourth option is building. Now, coal store is just a visual one at the moment, I believe. And likewise, warehouse one is also visual. Um, power station and substation, I haven't gotten into yet, so I can't cover the tutorial on those until I actually learn how to use them myself. First thing you're probably going to want is an oil pump, which looks like that when you place it. Only it doesn't look like that straight away. So if I click on oil pump, you see, get the oil pump and we can rotate it. And essentially, you want to be placing it somewhere within those four white sticks. So if I place that, you'll see you don't get the building get a notice board like so and it will give you multiple options on how to build it so option one is heavy goods and large materials now on this map 
I had to go with option two, heavy goods and lumber, because when you're doing narrow gauge, large materials are very large. Not exactly stable to bring those. So either way, what you do is plunk that and you bring your trains and you can either leave it on the wagons or you can use a crane or something forklift to offload them on the ground nearby. And if I click E on this, one second, let's bring up the cursor, you'll see there's a big rotating orbs of light. Essentially, as long as your materials are in range of that, it will build. And we'll get rid of that. And so once you've got that, that means you've got a way of getting the oil out of the ground. However, you're also going to want one of these, which is a crude oil storage, I believe it is. Yeah. So you're going to want a crude oil storage close by your pump to store that oil in. And worth mentioning these pumps are very slow so press the right button so you do have the option of a big oil pump it looks like that so if i just place that you can see the material cost to build this have essentially doubled so that's something to bear in mind your big oil pump is going to cost you a lot more materials, but it will be more effective at pulling the oil out. So let's just delete that. So anyway, once you have all this set up and it's good to go and running, and your gauge round here is filling up with crude oil. You can see mine's just over half full on here. Then your next step is going to be carting it out. So what you want is rail close to these pipes coming down on this end. And you've got a little control panel here, which when you click it, it'll light up. And as you can see, it'll fill up the wagon. So what you do is run your wagons through until full. You see, I've got another crude oil storage set up over there. And then once your train's ready to run, that's when you head to anywhere on the map you want to build your refinery. So let's jump over to that now. And through the miracle of editing, here we are at my refinery. Now, the first thing you're going to want to place down is another crude oil storage. This time, you see there's a grate, and that wants to be underneath your track. So the grate is on the side with the ladder. And following from that, you build the refinery itself, which once you've built all the materials will look something like this. And then that, when activated, is going to belch out flames every 20 seconds or so, I think it is, to show that it's operating. However, it's not going to operate until you've built a third thing on your site which is a diesel storage. As you can see, construction options again. So cost, if you go for option three, costs about the same as your small oil pump. There is no larger version to these, just one option at the moment. And you see, I've built it here. 
to the grate over the track. You don't have to, though. As long as it's in range of your refinery, you're good to go. And in the case of this, I can just pull my trains up here. If your trains are in range, similar to the fuel tanker at spawn, it's close enough. You can just click your fill fuel and it will fill up. Fortunately, this loco is full, so I can't demonstrate it. But that is how you're going to get fuel for your diesel locos. And should you want to, you could sign some more of these diesel storage tanks around your map, and you could use tankers to pull it out of this first one and go and deliver it elsewhere around the map. Now, this is worth mentioning. You may be thinking, well, why would I go to all this effort that? An awful lot of effort. I'm not getting any money for my materials that I'm using to build this. And the reason you do it, and the reason I'd recommend doing it sooner rather than later, is A, you're not going to be dependent on taking your locos all the way back to spawn every time they need filling up. And B, there will come a point in this game's development where unlimited fuel is not an option at spawn anymore. I don't know if they're going to remove the tank or whether it'll have a limited amount and then once it's gone, it's gone. But yeah, you're going to want to get your oil running as soon as you comfortably can. Obviously, build up your infrastructure first using steam. Locos at the moment you have got unlimited fuel if you want to go that route and run some diesels, but certainly don't rely on that long term. So that's all the boring technical stuff out of the way. What's a fun part to all this? Well, let's have a look, shall we? If you fly up in the air and come over to here when it's running, just wait for it to belch out its flames. Actually, it's going to be easier if I zoom in. I apologize for jumping up and down. Not the greatest at lining this up. When the flame goes off, you can go up to space. Look at that. We'll Zed lock ourselves in place. You get a great view of the whole map from here, look. So if you're planning a route down the side, well, you can see roughly what terrain you're going to be fighting. want to work out your way around the north you could do that too and right over there in the distance is longstrom which is actually going to be subject of my next video it's not going to be a tutorial one that it's just going to be showcasing my new line that i built up to longstrom it is a bit awkward to get up there but i'll show you how i tackled that in a future video but anyway, if this video has been helpful to you in any way, I'm going to click the Z button so we can fall back down to Earth. But yes, if this video has been helpful to you in any way, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. If you enjoy my content, there's that subscribe button, and it's always appreciated when you share the videos out, get more people in on the community get more people interested in this game or other games i'm playing and more people watching more views which encourages me to make more videos but anyway that is going to be it for this one guys thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now